Phylum Periphera. Peripherans are sponges. And this will be the first video of the series of videos on sponges. Okay. So, what do we see? We see lots of holes in these things. And periphera means pore bearer. And pores, being holes, are the characteristic that uh, is diagnostic in sponges. When you see a lot of holes, then you're probably looking at a sponge. By the end of these uh, these videos, you should be able to describe the structure and function in the sponges. You should be able to define the three common classes of sponges. You should be able to explain the three different structural forms of sponge and name and describe the different cells of a sponge colony. Those are the learning outcomes that you should be able to take from this series and if you can do that you should have no trouble with the exam. So I'll have a look at some of the sponges that you're likely to see or the types of sponge that you're likely to see. This is a uh, Tatia Ngali. This is a local um, orange golf ball sponge. There's a pink golf ball sponge as well and this is the most common uh, subtitle sponge that you'll see in the shallow waters around New Zealand. Uh, what else do we have? We've got a uh, lovely tube sponge. It's more tropical. Okay, this is a uh, sponge that's been used to, um, well, it's got a chemical property that is showing some promise with fighting certain types of cancers and is being cultured on uh, lines and on muscle farms. Here's the squishy type, the cosmetic bath sponge. We've all felt and probably used. If you look at this one, this is a deep sea sponge garden. And just the first thing that you notice about this is that there are lots and lots of different shapes, sizes, and when you put them all together in this garden, uh, then it, you can see that it creates quite a, a uh, variety of habitats for uh, animals, other animals to live in. No um, algaes, of course, because it's so deep. There's no light. It's, uh, the only light is provided by the uh, camera uh, and the lights of the of the submersible. But you can see that there are lots and lots of little habitats that are created by all these sponges, and an amazing variety of shapes. There's quite beautiful uh, animals a lot of the time. And uh, just as a funny little aside, if, when you have clusters of different species of sponges, it's known as a sleaze. Okay, here's a barrel sponge. We know that this is, whoops, we know that this is a bar uh, tropical one because you can see the margin right here of a coral. You can see the same type of corals here. Uh, down along here, but uh, obviously this one is quite a bit bigger. And a lot of the sponges that you do see, though, will be just these little encrusting things that live on the as a layer on rocks. There's another one. Maybe uh, not just rocks. Sometimes you'll see them on uh, the stalks of seaweeds and uh, other animals. Okay. This one is Dendrilia rosea. That's a um, one taken from a picture taken from Motiti. It's probably about 15 centimeters high. Beautiful colors, just delicate pink, and uh, uh, they have antibacterial properties. These ones are sometimes used in chemistry. Here we go. This is a gray finger sponge, Raspalia taxenti, and you can see there's a little kinna over on this side. Whoops. And so you can see how the size of this, which is quite big for a uh, local finger sponge. That's quite a nice example. There's a common decorator crab. So you can see that this would be fantastic com uh, camouflage for this for this animal. If it sits still, things will swim right by it, and it cultivates these sponges to live on its shell. So sponges, where do we find sponges? Well, we find them mostly in marine environments. There's some in freshwater. They tend to be very small, small little encrusting sponges, uh, but mostly marine. And all sponges are attached to the bottom. So if you see this word, let's try this. 
my draw pens. Point pen. Okay. You see this word benthic right here. Benthic is a term that you'll see quite a bit in the course of your study, and it means associated with the bottom, the bottom underneath the water column. So it has to be covered by water, but it's the bottom environment. Uh, things can live in the benthos, but all sponges are attached to the bottom. No planktonic sponges, no free-floating sponges. What are they? Well, they're animals, as we know that because we're studying marine invertebrate biology and all invertebrates are animals. And the cell, we know that what makes up an animal is that it's multicellular and that it's heterotrophic. So heterotrophic means it doesn't make its own food. It has to feed on other things, other organic compounds already created by, not created, already synthesized by other organisms. And that's exactly what these do. This jelly bean example is actually quite a nice way to think of a sponge colony. Every one of those jelly beans is an independent little lolly. But when you put them all together, um, if, then they make this pile. And that's exactly the same way that sponges work. They're all independent little cells. But when they, work, when they pile up like this, then they work together as a colony. And so... It's on the edge of the line between animals and um, protists, but you can see when you look at the structure of a sponge that sponges work together but are as independent cells. So since they have they are independent cells, no they don't have any tissues and they don't have any organs. So sponges, what are they? The growth is influenced by substrate, space, and water movement. So sponges, even the same species of sponge, can take on lots of different shapes. They may be influenced by the water flow that's around them. They may be growing towards a current that provides a lot of nutrients going past. Uh, they may um, be influenced by the surrounding organisms that live around them. Uh, they may be influenced by the uh, type of uh, substrate that they grow on. For example, a sponge that settles onto a little shell or that's surrounded by sand may not be able to expand as large as a sponge that settles into a rock garden okay, um, or a boulder bank. And they may get very large if there are a lot of resources available. They may get, stay small. They um, tend to have similar shapes for a different for each species, uh, but uh, they can grow to quite different sizes and shapes, even for the same species, which makes them very hard to uh, to identify sometimes.